Good afternoon. I'm Ernie Bauer, the Senior Advisor and Director of the Southeast Asia Program here at CSIS. And we're honored today to have our U.S. Ambassador to Manila, Harry Thomas, with us. Harry, thanks for joining us. Um, tell me, if you would, uh, what's going on on the security relationship? The U.S. and the Philippines relationship is in the news a lot these days related to maritime security in the South China Sea. What's, what's your perspective? Well, thank you so much for that. We are very excited about our opportunity to help our Filipino colleagues improve their humanitarian assistance, mm -hmm. uh, disaster awareness, mar maritime security. This is one of the most uh, disaster prone areas of the world. Right. And it's, the United States has always helped the Philippines. We will continue to assist them. But more importantly, we want to see them to continue to do what they've been doing the last few typhoons, where they've been able to take on the lion's share mm -hmm. of the response by themselves. And I think that's a large part due to their training, uh, their fortitude, but also the assistance we've given them over years. And that's what we want to continue. Okay. But I've, I've got to ask you mm -hmm. on the South China Sea. Um, what, how, do the US, how does the U.S. think about the, the Philippine position uh, there, and um, could you tell us a little bit more? Sure. Well, as you know, the United States takes no sides on the Chow Sina Sea. Right. Uh, we think that all claimant states need to sit down. We do support the Declaration of Conduct. We think the claimant states need to organize themselves. Uh, we do believe in this multilateral approach is very important. We know that President Aquino and Foreign Secretary Del Rosario believe in this, that they want to work very closely with their ASEAN colleagues on this. They want to show that they're a team player on something as important as the South China Sea. And as Foreign Secretary Del Rosario, who can speak for himself better than I can, has mm -hmm. said, that the Philippines will work with other states on areas that are non-disputed, but areas that are disputed, they need to deal with an international fora. Let me move to trade yeah. uh, and economics, sure. the, other, the other pillar yeah. of our engagement there. Um, I know we have a trade investment framework yes. with the Philippines, but will the Philippines possibly join the Trans-Pacific Partnership, and what would it take for them to do that? Well, you know, the U.S. Deputy Trade Rep was just out in the Philippines last week. We're so excited to have him, him there. Philippines has a ways to go on that. Um, the, before we can approach the other nine countries, mm -hmm. Philippines will have to work very, very hard on that, that issue. Uh, look, the, there are constitutional issues, executive orders, uh, amendments that the Philippines will have to deal with. And that's the way it should be. They're a democracy. Let it be their decision yeah. whether they're interested fully in the uh, Trans-Pacific Partnership. But we're so excited by the progress that we've made. And Mr. Morantis yeah. came away uh, with a very good feeling. The TIFA is just a start. And you have to build on things. And let's build things slowly so that we get it right. Because the TPP is not open to other countries right now uh, anyway. So let's help the Filipinos get it right in the way they choose to get it right. Mm. And then we'll, we can talk about the TPP. You know, the President Aquino, when mm. he came into power, was, was really came in on a platform mm. of cor fighting corruption. Yeah. How's he done on that front? Well, he's been an ideal president on that. Um, you know, the Philippines has been looked on as a place where corruption could be rife. Mm -hmm. And we in the United States have to stand with presidents that fight corruption. Yeah. We're about honesty and transparency. So that is what he's doing. Uh, now it's up to the Senate and the judiciary who are independent bodies and, and how they uh, convict or cooperate with people. But in terms of stamping out corruption, just look at some positive things. Yeah. Now when you go to procure a um, government item, it's up on a uh, website. The procurement practices are open to the public. People can see what you, you have to do. The days of backdoor deals, he's trying to end that. Now, can all of that have been done in a year or two? No. Mm. Does there have to be corruption in the street against uh, some lower elements? Yes. But to have a cabinet which is largely honest and a president who's dedicated to ramping out corruption, because he understands that corruption costs the economy so much, costs the average person who has to pay bribes to get his kid in school or right. to a policeman. And I think that's one of the major reasons his popularity is, hovers over 60%. Hmm. What, what would you say um, is the status of the U.S.-Philippine relationship? You've been in Manila for uh, 
more than a year now, right? Yeah. Almost two years. Almost two years. And the president's been in office yeah. for, for about two years. Yeah. So we're coming up to the end of the uh, first Obama administration. Maybe <laughs> there'll be another one. Uh, maybe there won't. Um, <laughs> but how would you how would you talk about that that relationship since since you've been in the military? Well, clearly, as the Filipinos say, Ernie, it's more fun in the Philippines. <laughs> it's, it's been more fun for us, I think, for yeah. a whole host of region, reasons. The Filipinos um, are their own independent democracy. They are charting their own course, and that's what we want to see. Mm -hmm. We want to align ourselves with them in ways that we can that line up with our priorities and mm -hmm. President Obama's and Secretary Clinton's directives uh, to us. That's what we want to see. The, the Asia pivot of Secretary Clinton has been monumental, but frankly, the fact that the United States and the Philippines can work so closely on a whole host of military issues, on a whole host of economic and trade issues. And the Philippines is one of the four countries that President Obama chose for the Partnership for Growth, mm. and where our aid has actually increased. Yes. That has been tremendous. So we're looking at the depth of our relationship. Clearly now, Filipinos are among the largest immigrant groups to the United States. They're playing a great role uh, in our own country. Right. So that dynamism, dynamism has added to what we're, we're trying to do. And again, um, as I've said, we're just excited. It is, they're right, it's more fun in the Philippines. It's going to be more fun in a few weeks. Okay. When uh, Secretary of Defense Gazmin and Foreign Secretary Del Rosario come here mm. to meet with Secretary Clinton and Secretary Panetta to discuss a whole host, a range of issues. And the reason we want this two plus two is to show the depth and breadth of the issues we have with the Filipinos, that yes, they they cover the partnership for growth. Yes, they cover the environment right. and trade, as well as uh, military issues. It's it's a lot, and most important, people to people. So the U.S.-Philippine Treaty Alliance is sounds like it's in great shape and and very dynamic right now. They're one of our most important treaty allies, and we're going to make sure that they stay that way. Thank Ambassador you so Harry much. Thomas, thank you for joining Thanks, us. Thanks, Ernie. Thank Thanks for having much. me, as always. Thank you.